right, y'all. Nashville, round what? Part six? It's part six. I am leaving Georgia now about three hours later than I originally planned because my pretty little ass can't sleep on my anxiety medication. And I woke up at four o'clock in the morning and then didn't wake up again until what, noon? <laughs> we got a picture of the granite that they cut for my countertops. And even though we saw a sample of it before they cut it, this does not look like the correct granite. It looks like the wrong texture and the wrong color. And so then mom and I, of course, got into a huge argument about that. I'm going to go to the bank and go pick up my anxiety medicine as I definitely need it. And then I'm gonna turn my happy ass back around, head out of Blue Ridge and go toward Tennessee. Don't you just love how bad my face is broken out the last couple days just being stressed out about things i guess all right some lovely news there cvs does not take my new insurance so my paxil was going to be 120 something dollars so i can't do that i'm gonna go home and pick up my backup paxil so i have pills and then i guess call and figure out what the hell I'm gonna do probably move it to Walmart or something I don't know and then maybe we'll get it out of this godforsaken town dang it <laughs> so uh, a lot of times when I'm on the road I will listen to um, crime stories it, uh, on YouTube and uh, two of my favorite people to watch are Kendall Ray and Stephanie Harlow and they both have different kind of ways of telling their stories. I'm listening to Stephanie right now talk about Joseph Man Mangley, Mangley um, the, one of the Nazi doctors. It's sad of course like the whole the whole Nazi Germany um, you know all the concentration camps all that stuff is god awful terrible but it's just it's interesting to hear their perspective on it and what they thought that they were doing by creating this this race of people like it's just it's insane it's absolutely insane that that ever became like a thing over there i just wow wow <laughs> What the hell, Chattanooga? Is it, there's always horrible traffic, but then again, excuse me, it is my fault for leaving this late and being here at five o'clock. So get this, I should have filmed it, but I, I didn't want to like wreck trying to film it, but we're stuck in this traffic, okay? This truck gets in the emergency lane, which already is illegal, but then starts backing up, I guess in efforts to possibly back completely up to the previous exit so they can pull off to do something instead of waiting in this traffic. And I was like, how stupid are you? <laughs> at this beautiful sunset. I know this is dangerous, me holding my phone while driving. I'm looking at the road, but I just had to show you how beautiful this is. So we're back in Nashville. I guess this is part six at this point. Woo, I just walked up those stairs, I'm out of breath. I need to work out now, don't I? Al texted me earlier on my way up here and said that he switched out the hot water heater. He found a lot of mold and of course dust. And I was like, no wonder the last time I was up here, if you watch the previous video, uh, part five, you'll see how I was complaining about my asthma and my allergies acting up. So now we know why. <laughs> wasn't just the rain, there was mold in here. So I gotta get ready to do a live stream on Scenes Media's page. I forgot to bring my ring light, I forgot to bring a tripod, I forgot to bring anything that would make a video worth looking at. So I'm gonna sit here for the next 30 minutes and try to come up <laughs> with some kind of light arrangement and seating that doesn't look completely shitty so i will see y'all a little bit y'all want to see the disaster that i left here from last time <laughs> that's what happens when you want to paint but you don't have a kitchen sink that works yet ew 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 oh y'all i've been
been eyeballing this place for a while now. They've got a um, newer, I guess, German restaurant called the Bavarian Beer Feast. Um, <laughs> sorry to the Germans out there. Um, over at Aubrey Mills, and it's really close to my house. So I actually got an Austrian Chardonnay. I like the Chardonnay. It's good. It's cold. It's communal seating though, which is interesting. I'll show you. The people next to me um, were telling me that they just had a shot called the red-headed slut or whatever. And I laughed pretty hard. Also, they're playing like German EDM music, which is so weird to hear because when you think of Germany, from over here, like you think of like polka music, but this is like electronic polka music. So I'm like, my mind is being blown. Oh my goodness, food porn time. So we got pretzel with lots of salt, the way I like it. Beer cheese, I paid extra for that, like an idiot. And broccoli cheese soup, because apparently I want to be constipated from now until the day I die. Well, I was wondering why my throat was acting up, and now I know I walked out into the rain every single time it rains. And I mean, there's also a little bit of mold left in my house. Ah, ah, copyright, copyright. Before I start driving, let's talk about this. I just needed a snack, so I got creamy broccoli and cheese soup, a small pretzel and beer cheese, and a glass of Austrian wine. The Austrian Chardonnay was actually pretty good. I mean, it was a cheaper one. It wasn't like I spent out the ass for it, but it was like, you know, $8 standard, like, eh glass of wine. It was good. It reminded me a little bit of Disney World when I went to Germany at Epcot and had a few different wines over there, but my palate's changed a lot since, what, 2014 or whenever that was. So, I like the wine a lot. The broccoli cheese soup, I loved that it was kind of whipped and creamy, but it was a little bit cold, but I guess, you know, it's kind of toward the end of the night and it's not really a busy night, so it kind of makes sense that they wouldn't want to make, like, new soup. Pretzel was really good. It was the perfect amount of crispy and soft and it was really salty all over which is great i hate it when i get um, a soft pretzel and it's only got like little patches of salt this one had the right amount of salt it was cooked really good and the beer cheese i liked that it was creamy but not too chunky because a lot of times you get beer cheese and it's really chunky and it won't stick to the pretzel but this stuck really well to the pretzel i gotta give them like a b i'd come back if i really wanted german food i'm kind of one of those people that only wants german food every once and again probably because i play in helen so much i get sick of it but nothing they call Crazy. Now they call so, about to pass by where Dottie West was in a car accident. Um, where is it at? Was it right there? Did I miss it? There it is. Okay, so right there at one of the entrances here to Opryland is where Dottie West um, was in a, a fatal car accident. She didn't die on the scene, but she did die once they took her to the hospital. She actually told the ambulance to take the driver uh, instead because he she thought that he had more injuries and that he should be taken to the hospital but it turns out I think that she must have had some kind of you know massive brain injury that she didn't know about yet I'm not sure on that I'll have to look it up but she later died in surgery because they she waited too long to go to the hospital and they couldn't fix what was wrong with her not gonna lie night one I'm bored out of my mind I just got back from eating that German restaurant and uh, it's just weird not having a TV or internet or anything set up and it kind of makes me go a little stir crazy at times so I mean I don't know I've got my little bottle of wine I haven't opened it yet um I gotta thank Laurie so much for this this uh crocheted blanket that she made me it's a throw it's a uh, green and purple and it is so soft it is the softest throw I've ever felt in my life they come up to see me a lot at Crane Creek or like Young Harris Blair's little area and uh, they've always been such great supporters but this is like one of the most awesome Christmas presents ever and I love to collect stuff that people make for me or give me at my shows or whatever and so this is gonna be cool to ordain my uh <laughs> my green couch here in the living room I think it'll be a good good addition I'm gonna cuddle with it is what I'm gonna do because I love it so much <laughs> thank you Laurie I love it Sup everybody, it's day two. Al just got here and he's working on patching that huge hole in the bedroom from the shower in the bathroom. It must have leaked when the other guy lived here. And so that wall was very fragile and, and stained and buckling and he had to cut a lot of it out and patch it. So he's doing that, I'm about to pull out. <laughs> <laughs>
the dirty mind has to stop at some age, but not quite yet. Not quite yet. I'm about to head out to Stone World to see about what the granite looks like because they sent us a picture and it looks a lot darker than I thought it was gonna be. So I wanna make sure that it's the right shade of gray before we decide to get them to cut it and bring it out here and put it into my kitchen. I'm a freaking idiot. I was supposed to go to this appointment at two o'clock, but I could not get to sleep last night. And then once I finally did get to sleep, that mattress is the most comfortable, dreamy mattress. And especially for the price we paid for, I think we only paid like a few hundred bucks for it. So comfortable. Once I finally got into that sleep mode, I could not get up. So I went over and I saw the granite and I should have filmed but I get so distracted when I'm having to talk to strangers and it gives me a lot of anxiety so I usually forget to film and I also don't want people to be weird about me filming. But I looked at the granite once I finally got to see the transition between where it's drying and where it's still wet. It looks a lot lighter. It is going to look kind of gray from a distance but it's got black and white and gray in it. And this car coming up behind me, this truck, he's like driving fast he seems angry I'm driving slower than him but yeah it looks it looks fine to me I went ahead and signed off on it and we are going to get it put in within a week or two I hope so there's a Grand Ole Opry it's just insane to me that this mall used to be a theme park I know mom said she took me here when I was like two or three and I really honestly don't remember anything about it being a theme park. I do remember though when they were building the mall, like I remember getting up here and driving past the mall and they were building it, but that is the first memory I have of this location. I'm gonna go into Bed Bath & Beyond and see if I can find anything that I need to buy um, and I'm gonna eat too. Probably eat at Chewy's or something. That lady next to me just looked at me like I'm an insane person because I parked so close to her car, but I literally couldn't help it. <laughs> this is cute. I came into Bed Bath & Beyond and uh, this is a cutting board and it's got all the major Nashville cities on it. That's cool. I found myself back at Chewy's at the mall because um, it's pretty close to Bed Bath & Beyond. I have me a happy hour mango margarita. I'm eating their lovely chips and salsa. And I ordered me some Baja tacos. I haven't had fish tacos in a long time, so. Oh yes, we got fish tacos and of course the salsa, which burns the hell out of my mouth, but I love it to death. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh. no wonder I'm having asthma. <laughs> exactly, Ew, what, what, RC Cola's under RC. there? That puts something back into the early 80s. Well, yeah, they built this in the 80s, so I guess that was the original words. <laughs> We're working on the house. <laughs> I, I don't know how. I mean, I had drums in the house my whole life. It was like, I don't know, I'm not on the end of this <laughs> Uh, no, I was sitting there in the corner playing on that live stream last night. I was like, I, I was like, I bet they hate me too. But now, yeah, really. <laughs> oh, we are ripping out the stairs, and it is like a trashy, like trash heap underneath there. It's a lot better now. There were RC Colas and Pepsis in there from like the 80s. <laughs> they just left trash underneath the stairs. And the I don't leave... Yeah, the whole freaking garbage <laughs> What is it, this one? Yeah, I'm The freaking garbage bag is full of junk. You can't even see it, but it's like a whole garbage bag full of it. Taco Bell? Yeah. <laughs> they left the Taco Bell and their Pepsi in there from the 80s, so. All right, y'all, we're heading on out to Belcourt Taps. This isn't the first time I've played here, but it's the first time I've played this guy's round, and his name's...
and I just figured I got nothing else to do. And even though it does not pay, um, I'm just gonna go play a few songs for the 11 o'clock round, have me a beer or two, then I'll try to figure out something to do tonight. It's just like a, a Hey y'all, we did the drinking song, we did the breakup song. I guess we need a love song now, right? Do it, because I don't have any of them. Do it? Usually I only write when I'm pissed off, so. Same. so yeah, Same. pretty much all the songwriters only write when they're upset or something. So things were going really well for me. I was down here and my, my producer said, hey Cody, how come you haven't wrote in a while? And I said, well, I don't know, man. I'll just go cruising, I'll write a bunch of horrible yeah. stuff and then I'll write something like Better Without You. And then I'll write something like, I'll just go like a long time without writing. So he locked me in the room and he said, all right, you ain't coming out until you wrote a song. So this is my most recent one. This is called Love Like Mine. All the things I want to tell you, but so hard to put in words. I like how much I love you, or how much you hurt. You got me insane. If you never saw coming, you heard about a time or two. Just to have a love like mine. God, how do I even start this? I've come to a point now where I'm trying to network with new people and slamming new people and talking shit about them is not a smart thing to do. <laughs> I started this off like I was gonna promote the guy that I just played with for his writer's round, but now I'm not so sure. Um, <laughs> I don't like it when I end up working with somebody who is kind of misogynist or misogynistic or whatever. I like to say misogynistic. I don't even know if that's a word, but I, when I end up working with or around a guy that absolutely like tries to act like he's God and tries to like be like, I've got all these sponsors and I've got all this shit and and uh, you just you don't do anything right and nah, 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 nah. it gets on my nerves. This guy tonight. How do I put this? Like you just get that vibe off of them that like they don't respect women completely. It really pisses me off. This guy was talking about his wife and how they didn't screw enough and how she has a kid and that she needs to pick between her kid and him. And I'm just like, who says that? Like, who says that? <laughs> I get like, if you're feeling lonely that your wife won't have sex with you after you have a kid, but like, you're gonna tell her that she has to pick between you and, and her kid and your kid, like they're, you're both your kids. You're like, what? <laughs> I think that that's a compromise that needs to be worked out between like all parties. Like that needs to be compromised and not a pick one, choose one, like type scenario. Like I just felt really odd in that situation. It was one of those moments where everybody kept talking and I just kind of wanted to leave, but I didn't know how to get out of there without being like too rude. I got out of it once by like saying I had to go to the bathroom. And then once I came back, I was like, I need my guitar back. Cause they were playing it at one point. I was like, can you have my guitar back please? And then the guy was like, thanks for coming out to my round. I'm glad that my friend introduced you to me. Like, I'm glad you didn't suck. Cause usually I get somebody and they fill in and they suck. And I'm like, well, it, yeah, thank you for verifying that I don't suck. Oh, this is one of those nights I just feel really just defeated. There wasn't a lot of people at our round either. I did meet a couple cool people though. So it wasn't all bad. We see the positivity in all situations, regardless of what happens. But no, tonight was not one of those overwhelmingly inspiring nights. It was just one of those nights where I was like, I knew I was going to meet some D-bags in this town. We started off on a high note. I'm losing my faith in humanity. He invited me back to do another um, writer's round tonight and hell no, I'm not doing it. No, no, 
I do not deal with these misogynist people. So bye bye. I'm gonna finish my makeup. People make me want to fucking puke. Ugh! Broken down the music room. Not sure if I should stay or go. When they say you gotta change.